What's going on Trip Team? Willie Michael here and welcome to this week's video. What's going on Trip Team? So I have a great video for you guys this week. Now this week we're going to jump into wild bird seed. I'm going to show you guys how I prep my wild bird seed because a lot of you guys have been asking for this video. Now Wild bird seed is just another grain that you guys could use to fill up your quart jars and inoculate. Now, the reason why people like to use wild bird seed is because it's readily available and it's extremely cheap. A 10 pound bag costs you $5. So let's jump right into this video. This is what you're gonna need to get going on your own wild bird seed. The first thing you're gonna need is your wild bird seed. Now, wild bird seed is readily available if you've never purchased wild bird seed before, it's usually in the home and garden section. So if you guys don't find it on the regular shelves, you guys could just walk into like the outdoor garden section and that's usually where they'll have it. They have all different size bags from 10 pounds to 50 pounds. You guys could purchase whatever you guys think you need or whatever your budget allows you to purchase and it goes a long way. Now, if you could purchase your wild bird seed without cracked corn or sunflower seeds that would be best but it's not a big deal if it has cracked corn and sunflower seeds it's not a huge deal I'm gonna show you guys how to clean it up right now you're also gonna need some gypsum and some fresh coffee this specific recipe that I'm gonna show you right here calls for three cups coffee once you guys have all that together you guys are ready to start washing your seed before you guys actually wash your seeds I want to let you guys know that this recipe is going to fill up 8 to 10 quart jars depending on how accurately you guys fill them up. If you guys fill them up 3 quarters of the way, this will fill up 10 quart jars. So I just want you guys to know that. If you guys need less, just cut the recipe in half. If you guys only want to do 5 quarts, you guys could figure out the math. It's very easy. But this specific recipe is going to fill 8 to 10 quart jars. So the first thing you want to do is you want to fill up your pan that you're going to be washing your seed in. You want to fill it up with 10 cups of wild bird seed. After you have your pan filled up with your 10 cups of wild bird seed or however much bird seed you guys need for what you're doing, you want to look at your bird seed. You see it has cracked corn in it. It has sunflower seeds in it. We want to get the majority of that stuff out. Plus, uh, bird seed is very dirty and dusty and sometimes there's rocks and hay and all types of stuff in there so we want to clean this up and the way you want to do that is by taking your pan right under your faucet and you want to fill it up with cool to cold water it doesn't need to be hot water cool or cold water will work just fine fill it up all the way And what you want to do is you just want to run your hands through it and wash it. You want to get all that dirt, dust, and all that stuff you don't want out of the mix. As you guys can see, all the stuff you don't want floats to the top. So we want to get rid of all that stuff, all that sunflower seed, all that trash. You guys could just take a ladle, just like this, or a big spoon, and just dump all that out. You don't need any of that stuff. You could get rid of all of it. As you guys could see, we got most of the sunflower seeds and all the floaties out of the water. Anything that's floating on top of this water, you don't need. As you guys could see, there's hay and sticks and twigs and all types of stuff inside here. And the way you could get off all the rest of the stuff is just dump it right off, just like that. Everything that stays at the bottom is what you're going to need and everything that comes off is just excess. You guys don't need that. You guys just want this stuff that's sitting right here at the bottom. We're going to continue washing this off until we get most of all them floaties out. If there's a few left behind, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. But we want to try to get off as much as we can. We also want this water to come out really clean. After about three or four rinses, this water should come out pretty clean. 
as you can see guys i got all them sunflower seeds out of there at least 99.9 .9 percent of them you're always going to have one or two that get left behind and you don't need to worry about that but you want to get the majority of them out of there once your water is nice and clean like this it's not pouring off murky or dirty any way whatsoever and you got them sunflower seeds out of there you want to fill it up with warm water just above the wild bird seed once you guys have the water just above the wild bird seed and it's nice and clean you want to add two tablespoons of gypsum after you guys add your two tablespoons of gypsum now you want to add your three cups of coffee plain black coffee Now what you want to do is you want to take a spoon and you just want to stir all that up. And once you have it all stirred up, you got that magic recipe of water, wild bird seed, coffee, and gypsum. Now we have to let it hydrate. So what we're going to do is we're going to cover it over and we're going to let it hydrate for 12 hours. After the 12 hours, we'll come back and we'll move on to the next step. All right, guys, so now we've had our wild bird seeds sitting and hydrating for 12 hours. Now what we need to do is we need to bring it to a simmer. So I don't want you guys to bring it to a complete boil where it's bubbling. I want you to bring it just before that point and then shut off your stove. And then we're going to strain it out. So right now, take your pot, put it on top of your stove, and bring it right before a boil. As soon as it starts building up a nice steam and it's about to start boiling, that's when I want you to shut off your stove and then we're going to strain them out. You guys want it just like that. You don't want it to stop boiling. You want it just at this point and then you want to strain it out. Alright guys, so you've seen how it should be. You should bring it right to that simmer. And when it gets to that simmer, now you want to strain off all your grains inside of a strainer. I know the camera is getting a little foggy, but I'm trying to give you guys the best view. Just like that guys. And then what you want to do is you just want to shake them up to make sure you release all that moisture and you let all that steam rise up because that's going to help dry the surface area of your wild bird seed. Now we're going to let them strain out occasionally shaking them so we could release that steam and then we're going to come back in 30 to 40 minutes and we're going to do the tissue test and we're going to make sure that they have the right moisture content all right guys so we've had our wild bird seed straining out for about 40 minutes every now and then we'd come back to it we'd shake it up just to release that steam that's trapped at the bottom because that hot steam is going to actually help dry the surface area of your wild bird seed so you can get the correct moisture content. So now what we're going to do is the tissue test. As you guys may know or may not know, I've showed you guys the tissue test before and you want to do the same exact thing with the wild bird seed. So as you guys can see right here, I have a piece of toilet paper on a cutting board and we're going to see if our moisture content is correct. So you take a spoon just like this pick up some of your wild bird seed, just a couple, and what you want to do is you want to throw it on top of the toilet paper. Now you're going to leave it there for about five to six seconds, and then we're going to dump off the wild bird seed. If there's no wet spots, then our jars are ready to be filled with our wild bird seed. If there's wet spots, then you want to let them strain out a little bit longer. So that's good. So let's dump this off and see what we got. As you guys could see, there's no wet spots. You can't see through the toilet paper. So it's ready to go. Now we could fill up our jars. All right, guys, so I have one of my quart jars right here, and I'm gonna fill up one for you guys, just so you could see. So you wanna take a spoon, and you just wanna start filling up your jars just like this. It doesn't need to be perfect. Sometimes I get a little messy with it, but you wanna fill it up about three quarters of the way. Just like that, guys, as you can see, I have it about two-thirds of the way full or three-quarters, however you guys want to figure it out in your head. 
And that's how you guys want it. You want to leave yourself enough room to do grain to grain transfers or shake them up. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to fill up the rest of my jars. Then we'll come back and I'll show you how to get them ready so that we could pressure cook them or sterilize them. So now we have all of our quart jars filled with our wild bird seed. So now we need to get them ready to sterilize or PC. So of course, as always, you want to take some tin foil and you want to cover over your jars like we always do. And I just wanted to point out these lids. These were actually sent to me from one of my supporters, one of our trip team family members. So I want to give a huge shout out to Todd for sending me these. I just want to show you, brother, I do utilize or I do appreciate everything that anybody sends me. I'm very grateful and I want to thank all you guys that have sent me stuff over these past couple years. So what I'm going to continue to do is I'm going to continue to cover over all my lids because we don't want our filters to get wet. And then what I'm going to do after I have all the lids covered over, I'm going to place these jars inside my pressure cooker and I'm going to pressure cook them 15 PSI for 90 minutes. All right, so that's 15 PSI for an hour and a half. Then what you want to do after they pressure cooked for an hour and a half at 15 PSI is you want to let that pressure build down on its own and you also want to let your grains cool. That could take anywhere from 12 to 24 hours. Like I always tell you guys, make sure that your grains are cool all the way through or it's gonna damage your spores when you inoculate. It will kill them if it's too hot. Even though it may feel cool to the touch on the outside, the grains that are in the middle could still be hot. They could still be heat trapped in the middle. So you guys wanna make sure that they're thoroughly cool all the way through. Once they're fully cool, we'll come back and we'll see what we got. Alright guys, so I just pulled my wild bird seed out of my pressure cooker. I let it cool overnight. Now my grains are cool all the way through and they're ready to go. I can inoculate them with a spore syringe. I could drop some agar wedges in there, do grain to grain transfer, whatever I want to do and you guys could do the same. Now wild bird seed works really well and especially for the price that you're paying and the amount you're getting. It's a really good grain to work with. You have to remember that 90% of wild bird seed is Milo, and Milo is some people's preferred grain that they use every single day. I actually like Milo personally, myself, but my top pick of grains would obviously be rye berries. I love working with rye berries, but Milo works really, really well, and I'm sure you guys will love wild bird seed, especially for you guys that are gonna be growing a lot of mushrooms and use one a lot of grain for a cheap price wild bird seed is definitely the way to go hopefully you guys enjoyed this video or hopefully it cleared up some questions you might have or it helped you make your decision on which grains you actually want to work with so if you guys love these videos and you want to see more and you want to show willie michael your support you should consider becoming one of my patrons what my patrons do is they make a small donation every month and in exchange for that donation they get VIP treatment. They get a whole bunch of special stuff that the general public don't get. So if you guys want to become one of my patrons, click the link in the description that will bring you there and you guys could read up all on it. They also get an additional video every single month that the general public doesn't get. No matter if you donate $2 or you donate $20, everybody gets that video and it helps push the channel a lot. So thank you guys again. I'm Willie Michael. Do good, be good, live good. Namaste.